Now I know you didn't get enough of all that cacti in the last video, so while I still have Richard here, we're gonna go through cacti propagation. Take us through some of the different varieties of succulents and cacti here. Okay, well right in this, in this little area here, uh, we'll start off with two species of the Kalanchoe family. Uh, it's a succulent plant group that comes from Madagascar. And they're collectively known as mother of thousands because of the fact that they produce along their leaf margins Boku of these little plantlets, yeah. and wherever they drop, a new plant will spring up. And I can see it's that they're extremely very prolific. prolific. <laughs> yeah. And you have you have two different species of Kalanchoe, <laughs> and they both have the property of producing plantlets along the leaf margin. Now I've seen those like little. Ooh, <laughs> I've seen those little panda bear Kalanchoe. The panda right? bear Kalanchoe yeah. it does not produce plantlets. Yes. But it's a member of the Kalanchoe family. Yeah. It's a fuzzy plant. It's a fuzzy. This is a this is a smooth leaf. The the Kalanchoe that uh, that's called the panda plant yeah. is aptly named Kalanchoe tomentosa. Tomentos meaning hairy. Hairy. And yeah. it's it's leaf is covered with fine hair. It's very soft. It has interesting brown markings from which it gets its name panda plant. And it doesn't produce plantlets on the leaves, but however, it is an excellent plant to grow from a leaf cutting. We walked around the greenhouse to grab some cuttings and I asked Richard how he typically propagates cacti and succulents. Just fill the pot with soil, keep it loose, and that way the tapered end which is well calloused, been sitting around for a couple weeks already. Push it down in to a, to a reasonable depth, firm it in a little bit, and voila, it's all that we need to do. And then of course, if we got a thousand cuttings to do, mm -hmm. we better, you know, shift into high gear <laughs> and start moving or else we'll never get the home for dinner tonight. And these are bunny ear cactuses? These are bunny ear cactus and they're just real fuzzy, but they're not sticky. Yeah. So you can touch them with impunity <laughs> and not, although they do, they can get a little itchy at times. These are quite popular. I always see them. Bunny ears are always popular. Yeah, especially so with kids. These little bunny ears could be taken off as well. They could be, but they're small. So, yeah. but any, any size will root and will grow. Doesn't even have to be a full ear, a little piece of an ear. And you just if it lay, if it's over. laid down on the side, it will yeah. it will just root right from the side. Oh wow! So it yeah. orients itself. Now it orients itself. Now once we get into a little bit bigger, we go to a next size pot. That okay. was a two and a quarter inch pot. Now we go to a two and a half inch pot. Doesn't sound like a big. Whoops! Look at those spines. Oh that, yeah! Look at that. Look at that little spine cluster that got in there yeah. somehow. And here <laughs> you can see the, the big central spine and mm -hmm. the radial spines mm -hmm. around the around the base. You don't want to get that stuck in your finger. Push that down and it'll keep it supported so it doesn't keel over because right now it's, it's not going to absorb any moisture from the soil at all until it sends down roots. So I had one of these um, prickly pear and they, they really do grow fast like after a certain size. Yeah, they do. During the growing season, prickly pear can, can really double or triple in size in one, in one season. And, you know, sometimes uh, I notice that the pads actually fall off themselves. Mm -hmm. Is that like a telltale sign that it just wants to be propagated? Not really. It could be any number of reasons why it might do that. It might not be getting enough water. Hmm. And so it just gets weak and it just falls off. Good to know. Then maybe I should water more of my, uh, my prickly pear. Yeah, home. yeah. They, they, during the growing season, they can take a good bit of water. It's during the winter time that you want to hold back and not give them anything. Right. But during the growing season, you have to, you have to kind of uh, cater to them. How do you deal with mealybugs? Mealybugs, uh, on a small scale, you take an old toothbrush or a cotton swab, dip it in alcohol, mm -hmm. and you can brush the mealybug right on the plant. Just brush it, and you will see it turn red, and it's dead. And then you can clean it off mm. with the same cotton swab. Now here's, this is a succulent and yep. it's already getting roots. Yep. So we're gonna make a hole with my finger so that those roots don't get crushed. Put it down in there and firm the soil around it. Add some more, some more soil. Firm it down there to keep it up. And those roots will just take off 
In fact, you can start watering those right away. The, the unrooted cuttings, you don't water at all mm -hmm. until roots appear. Okay, For something a little bit bigger, you, you take your, your em an empty pot rather than a filled pot, put it down in there. Whoops! Mm. Ants! Ants everywhere! Outside! <laughs> We brushed the, uh, these pots were lying around outside and a bunch of ants got in there and decided to make a house. Yeah. A home. I think they're probably as shocked as we are. Yeah. They just scatter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we take that, put it down in there, fill the soil around it, firm it down. And is this a type of aloe? This is a type of aloe, a spiny African aloe. They're beautiful. Not a medicinal aloe. Firm it just to keep the plant upright and it will take off and it will start sending down new roots as soon as it is planted. This should go into a larger pot. I might have a, maybe we can use this large pot. Is there a larger pot? Okay, four inch diameter yeah. pot, perfect. Scoop up a whole bunch of soil. And you're using like a succulent or a potting, a succulent potting mix or? No, this is just a general uh, plant, plant uh, medium. It's uh, got plenty of perlite in there, which is what we need for drainage, and it's good for any type of plant, whether it be tropical or cactus. Perfect. And there it is. It's nice and firm. It's not going to fall over, and it's not going to get any water until it roots. And then if we want to make like a little cactus garden, we take one in the back. We take a little column, a little spiny columnar cactus, and stick that and that's one's a little sharper, so I can't push quite as hard because yeah. I get the spines in my finger. And we take another little prickly pear, oh, yeah. another variety, clean off the dirt that's accumulated from its lying here. It's got some roots nice. already, so I'm going to make a little hole, stick that rooted portion down in there, firm the soil around it, add a little soil for support. And now we have the makings of a little desert scene. A little miniature cactus garden with three different colors, three different shapes, and a little interest. And then we throw some these, sand. Yeah. We throw some decorative sand on there. It's all right. Just throw it right on. Get that. There you go. They, these kind of move around. The, the sand particles move and, around very easily. And then, yeah, they're dry and, and they'll move easily when they're dry. And I'll just firm them in and that'll firm the whole arrangement. And bear in mind, there's really no, virtually no roots there. So we're not going to give that any water for about two, three weeks. Give it time to send down roots. Now this one looks a little puckered or you know, yeah, a yeah. Is this one's dehydrated. It's dehydrated. This one's showing showing its dehydration. Okay. So uh, hopefully it'll get some roots soon, and then start growing, and then that dehydration will will just uh, go away. Put that in there. In fact, I'm going to put another one in there mm -hmm. just to fill it out. Can put them in side by side, and that'll give you a fuller appearance. Yeah take up a little more space, make it a little more interesting. We can also uh, take these little columnar cuttings, cluster three of them together to simulate a little organ pipe ca uh, cluster, which is something that cactus doesn't do until it gets quite old, but we can do it artificially by starting out and clustering them right at the get-go. Make a little hole, put the three of them right down in there. And now we will have a much more interesting plant. Instead of a single stick, spiny stick, we will now have a nice little cluster. And they will just grow intertwined and become almost as one plant. That's perfect. It's beautiful. They could always be separated yeah. later on if you wanted to separate them. But they'll have a lot more interest if they grow up as a, as a uh, trio. All right. Voila. Voila. Thank you. If you want to check out Richard's cacti, then you should visit him every Saturday at the McCarran Park booth. Tell him you saw this video. Hopefully you found that insightful. So again, if you love these videos, don't forget to subscribe and you could follow along on homesteadbrooklyn.com and on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. Bye guys. Oh, <laughs>
armonia di bellezze diverse e bruna floria l'ardente amante mia e te Chiome bionde, tu azzurro hai l'occhio, tosca l'occhio nero, l'arte nel suo mistero, le diverse bellezze insiem confonde, ma nel ritrar costei il mio solo pensiero, oh, il mio sol pensier sei tu. To- Is it, is it recording? <laughs> it is. Oh, it recorded that? Yeah, totally. Oh, my God. I think I was actually on okay. key.